All right, tonight uh, we're going to talk about how I use the Masher strategy. Let's go. All right, let's get down into the main window. So this is our new layout here in our live streams. So um, let's get a quick, quick tour. Uh, we've got three primary charts now. Oops, I think I'm drawing on the wrong screen. One moment, I apologize. A little bit rusty. So again, new layout. So uh, we've got our three primary charts. This is, uh, so why am I doing this? This is really to kind of reduce the visuals for again a lot of people get scared away from our system because they think it's too complicated um you know i think we should probably kind of get people to understand it's really not that complicated there are only three time frames here now you might think well there's a lot of other things going on in there well there there's a lot of things that make the markets tick i don't know if anybody's figured it out yet or not but then when there's a 90 percent failure rate um in this area which again it's not that daunting when you think about there's a 90 percent failure rate of businesses in fact um elon musk actually said for his two companies tesla and spacex he said there was a uh, 90 percent chance he thought that they were going to fail so it's really fascinating to me that this whole conundrum but you need some things I don't understand why people think they can just come in here you know and press the buttons and they're going to succeed long term without putting in a little bit of work or that there might be some things that you might need and um, including you know there need to be enough things but not too many things and some people their complaints are oh there's too much stuff here and at the same time those are the same people who are completely unsuccessful find me a successful person who wants to come and say that same thing and then bring that person to compete with me and then when they can beat me then we'll talk, but this is a reduced workspace from our normal, like showing you all five screens at the same time. Now they're, they are kind of hidden. They're right down here in these tabs. We can actually tab over to them right here, but we've got our three time frames right here. Hopefully that does um, less scaring away people who are coming and seeing a live stream. And of course I'm using Enigma, which is such an, a powerful entry strategy that I can kind of rely less on some of that information, but we've got it down to three. Let's get into what I'm gonna focus here on tonight. How do I use the masher strategy? And that is gonna be specifically over to this chart right up here. This is the MACV filtering and sometimes entry chart it's a bit of a higher time frame i would call it a mid to low time frame because it is not really a mid we have a mid time frame that is what we do our optimizations for at the beginning of the week and you guys get those on sunday or monday this is just below that and you're going to get some big plays if you get a play off of this chart it's going to be a bigger play and i'm going to show you how i use the master strategy to pick up some extra ticks on some of those plays. Again, I'm perfectly fine with taking trades off here, uh, you know, a few ticks at a time, getting 10, 20, 40 bag tick targets, and that's okay. However, if you get one and it starts off on this chart here, we're gonna be starting instead of maybe a 20 tick trade, you might already be looking at a start of a 30 tick trade. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge this chart here. And we're going to zoom into some of the parts um, specifically around the masher and even how we actually got to use it today. I'm going to go ahead and zoom way in here on these two pivots right up here. So we were able to take this trade over here um, late in the afternoon or one like this. Actually, I'm just looking at the time of day. This might have been the one I have to go back and look, but uh, I just wanted to you know show this one as an example. I like to have this a bit zoomed in like this so that I can see the hills. Um, what am I talking about? The hills. These are the hills we're talking about. So let's outline these a little bit here. You see they're on the high side, but they're also on the low side. Okay, so these are the histograms of the Mac V specifically. That is the histogram. Now I'm gonna get into a lot of details on what specifically that is. I'm just gonna get right into showing you how I use it and apply it. Again, we attack the markets like it is a video game. We're not concerned with a lot of the philosophies of things. We will teach you those in depth in other videos, but how do I execute? That's what we wanna focus on. Execution is greater than analysis. Remember that, write that one down. Execution is greater than analysis a lot of people get analysis paralysis a lot of analysis oh i'm gonna analyze this and i don't think it's gonna do that who cares uh it doesn't mean a whole lot to me okay uh, what we want to do is mark out so let me delete this line first we want to find uh find your nearest pivot what i like to do on a master strategy is find a pivot where we had a turning point okay so um in this case 
Yeah, I don't think this is the one I took earlier today. Let me pause this and get to the one we did today. Okay, first, a uh, quick reference. If you have not um, gotten to this yet, again, I, I can't keep going back and reminding of everything, but on occasion, this like this is kind of important to this specific strategy. Remember, there are sections of the day. You need to be aware of what section you are in. Okay, we are looking for, first thing I'm gonna be looking for are some pivots, okay? Kind of standard issues is like anybody who's doing support resistance, they're gonna be looking for pivots, okay? Well, this is the one time, I don't say one time, there might be others, but this is a primary spot in the master strategy. I'm gonna be looking for pivots, but notice each one of these sections, you need to be looking for the pivots that are applicable to this section, pivots in this section, pivots in this section, pivots in this section, and they may, may be related or completely unrelated, remember that. So that might be a little confusing, but we're gonna reference back to that. So just keep that in mind as I start showing you pivots and how we're gonna choose which ones we're gonna use with our histogram hills down below. Okay, so I'm gonna start marking up some, what I would say, you know, obvious pivots, okay? Now I'm gonna start at the 9 a.m. over here on the left, because I really don't wanna do anything prior to that. 9 a.m. is kinda of where I mentally wanna start taking trades in general, I'm going to press F7 for the vertical. So I'm going to draw one right there. There's the beginning of one section. Now, starting right here and looking to the right, I want to try to find some primary pivots. Now I'm going to exaggerate these by pulling the chart in a little bit and making some slight adjustments like this. And you need to learn how to do this. Make sure you guys have watched my videos on how to play with and adjust your uh, charts so that the visuals, again, everything we're doing is visualizing price movement um so that's that's important okay so let's find a pivot there's there's a big one right there one kind of stands out to me doesn't to you so i'm going to draw a vertical right here f7 right there now again during the daytime if you're coming in to to trade you know in this window of time i'm you know not going to have all this information to the right i'm obviously doing this in hindsight to show you how this would have applied throughout the day so keep that in mind but you are only going to have maybe one pivot in the morning you might only have that clear pivot right there okay cool right there boom i want to at 10 a.m <clears throat> i want to mark that pivot right there this was a uh, I want to say it depends how you gauge this. So would you would you use the word major? I would. For this time frame, this is a major pivot point for this time frame. Does everybody understand this? this is a nine algo bar. This is quite large. You'll you'll start to get to figure out how big these are um, with practice. Because again, what we do inside of algo bars is we take away the time element, and now you get to see more structure, which is important, especially when you're using order flow. Because we want to see the order flow inside of a specific specific series of bars. That's a very important key level uh, or a key item for how we do, um, how we're as accurate and precise as we are. So this pivot is clear. Now let's look at the drop here. How much of a drop is that? I want you to start to gauge how big these are. So from the top of this to the bottom of the low there, that is actually 305 ticks. See that? So quite a large drop, even though it looks like eh, it's not very much on this chart. It is, it is because of the time frame. Now that's what I was saying, like plays that come off of this area, even a little bit of this is a lot. So let's say that we only caught this, this first little bitty leg right here. Okay. So how much is that? You're like, oh, I don't know. That doesn't look like very much of any. I don't know if I really want to catch that. Well, let's let me, I want to start this by framing this in reference. Let's go ahead and see what that would be. So to the bottom of that, that is 97 ticks. Do you understand why I think it's important? Okay, that is 97 ticks just to that drop right there. You understand? Okay, so do I want to catch a pivot on these? Yeah. In fact, even on the up move on this little, you might think, oh, that you know, triangle didn't really call some big up move right there. Well, what's one more time? Let's use the measurement from the bottom just to the top of that. That is 60 ticks to the upside. Can you catch 20 ticks out of that? Yes. Can you catch two sets of 20 ticks out of that? Yes. Can you catch 40 ticks? Yes. Do you have to catch the whole thing 60 ticks? No, but I want you to understand. Okay, that is actually a lot a lot of ticks. Okay. From there to there. Got it? Okay. Yes, Vinny, we got it. You don't have to repeat. Okay. I just want to make sure in reference cuz this is going to be important here in just a moment. We don't have to catch much out of these, which is why it's important to mark them. And you're going to see that and how we were able to capitalize on it today. All right, let's scroll over to the right. Now, um, I want to mark this location on my histogram down here. Now, I can tell 
from the left hand over here when I've got some pretty high hills. My high hills way over here at 9.16 a.m. I've got a big one right here. But you notice why I'm not going to mark it? That right there, if I look up, we really didn't have a major pivot turn right there, right? I mean, that, and now you're thinking, well, well I mean, that's probably a lot of ticks right there. <laughs> that's, that's not, that's very, very small, right? Not really something significant. And again, we're also right here at the open. It's 9.25 a.m., so take that into mind. And that's what I was saying about the whole sections, like divide these out into sections. Um, so this is going into that 10 to 12 section right here. This is gonna be a key pivot level. In fact, let's go ahead and draw a little box around that, okay? Now let's move over to the right. And what we wanna do is I'm gonna mark this, I'm gonna press F6 for my horizontals down here. I'm just gonna click on the top of this little hill right here, okay? Boom. Now that's gonna draw me a horizontal over to the right. And what I wanna see is I basically just, without even looking at the chart, I wanna look right here to see where the next location is that touched that hill, okay? So now if I look up, what do I see? Do I see a down move? Yes. Do I see a divergence there? Yes. Can I get some ticks out of that? Well, yes, let's find out how much, how much can we get out of that? So from the top of that to the bottom, that is a 70 tick drop. You see why it's kind of significant? And I can get that from, this is the master strategy. The master strategy is, yeah, is actually one of our members. Uh, his name is Masher. And I kind of like the fact, that, I don't know, I think about these hills popping up and mashing them down. So it was a great name and special shout outs to Masher and our crew who kind of started to visualize this and started using this um, for one of his um, filters on the high time frame, particularly high time frame. Doesn't mean I don't want to use it as a filter in that I'm not going to take a trade if it's against this or anything like that. But I would call these actual trade opportunities for bigger plays. Now again, do we have to catch bigger plays all the time? No, we can do quite fine. We have doing 10, 15, 20 tick targets all the time. You know, me now with Enigma, I'm doing a 20 tick target plus a runner. With, I mean, Enigma is just insane. It's like I said, it's a whole, it's, it's a whole animal all in of itself, super combo, c -c 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 combo kill um, type of strategy. Now let's move on here to the afternoon where I was taking trades. So right here is about, here's noon. Let's draw a vertical right here. Okay, now here's another interesting pivot. And that's a big one. We hit it again. Do you notice that the one from the morning right here into the afternoon, that one right there, now we look up. Do we get a nice big pivot turn off of that right there? Yes, we do. I want you to recognize why this can be a very cool and important thing to do and why this is a really neat way to play this. Now, is it 100% of the time? No, but when it does play out, and I'm also not taking the risk off of this chart. Again, I do not want to take the risk off of this chart because these are you know, big rewards, but I want to take the risk off of the lower time frames. Always keep that in mind. You guys should know that from our strategies already, but these are higher time frame opportunities for us to take, okay? So let's take a peek at how this one went. How far could this one have gone from the top with a triangle divergence? Remember that is a divergence on the ultimate Obos. And there it is, that is a 144 tick drop off of that. Now, yes, obviously you could, you, you could be like, oh, I could take this as a play. You could, but let's look at the, the stop risk. So your stop risk is behind a triangle. Why I don't like to just take these, just naked off of these by themselves, let's, let's look at the risk level. So if we enter in when that fires to the top of that, that's 33 ticks. Now, again, really up to you if that's a, if that's appropriate for you, fantastic. For me, again, my max is 25. I really don't want to take more than a 25 tick stop. So 33, a bit much. Now we could kind of solve this a little bit if I went down and I adjusted this to a nine algo bar. So I'm gonna duplicate this chart and show you what this looks like on an eight. So we go one level down, duplicate. And depending on the market environment, like right now the market's super volatile, so I, mean, I can use that higher time frame. But when the market starts slowing down, I wanna come down here and use an eight, okay? So now down here on the eights, let's see what our risk is down on an eight for one of these triangles. So um, let's look at the, this one, so we have a clear one here. Here's a clear one up here to measure. So here, 
that's only 27 ticks okay so now i might take a trade off of this but i need to go eh, i mean it's it's a max risk here but in the reward what's a reward layer off of one of these if one of these suckers runs right so your risk is this your reward is this okay here's another one so risk sure how about this one risk reward now do we know it's going to go that far no what if it's one of these you catch this one right here and it's like er, it goes you know 10 ticks and then comes back down oh that's that's a bummer right <clears throat> so we don't want to just take every single one of those here's one right here did not work right they're not these are not 100 percent so what we want to do is combine this with the masher and some other entry strategy on a lower time frame let's go back to our nines that we we're using earlier today so now we come back to this guy right here and let's see how we could have played that remember we had marked this little hill and basically the focus of the mac the masher is are the little hills okay whoops uh we didn't want to go to that one we wanted to go to this one this right here well now i might go well, what about this one right here this one came in well could we get could we get something out of that yeah remember we that was still 70 ticks so this one was still okay now this one, let's say we touch in right here. Do we have anything up here? No, there was no turning point. We didn't get, we didn't get a triangle, nothing. So again, you can't, you can't take every one of these hills, but if you get a hill set up and you have something on a lower time frame, we want to apply it. And that's why I'm saying you want to combine this with other things. I'm not telling you to take the master strategy as an entry strategy. This is not an entry strategy. This is an entry opportunity to take an entry strategy on a lower time frame. Hopefully you understand that. If you've been with us for a while, you know what I mean by that. If you don't, stay hang tight. I'll show you the actual entries that we took um, as we approach this time, um, as we enter this, okay? So now we got this one right here. I definitely want to mark this one right here. F7, we come back, we touch that hill. I'm watching it, I have plenty of time to see it. I want to be looking for a short opportunity around this location and I want to take it on a lower time frame. And of course, what's our drop? 144 ticks, we talked about that one. Now, can I do it again? Did I get to use it again? Well, yes, I did. Now, as this went up and we touched it, you're going, well, do I just take it right as we hit the hill? No, can you see how sometimes the hill continues on up? Okay, past that. So I don't want to just enter in, because, oh, oh, we touched the line, which is where we touched the line right here. Okay, and this sucker keeps going. And how far did that go? From there all the way up to the top, that went another 75 ticks. So again, you don't want to just take this naked, right? Um, was this the one we took or was this one over here? I'll have to go back and look. But I just want you to see how many times these play out. Now we see this one pivoted. Now this one also, it made a major pivot but it's higher. So I also want to come back and now I want to mark this one. Let's press F6 to the top of this hill because did we have a turning point right there? Yes, we did. Do I have a box I can do right here? Yes, Control C, Control V. Let's drag her over. That one also was one. So I want to mark this one right here. Press F7, boom, draw down right there. Boom, there's the top of the hill. So over here to the right, do I want to take a short opportunity as this one hits up top? Yes, I do. How does it play out? The very next one. This is better when you're doing these side by side. The very next one. The ones that carry over, eh, again, dividing up by section. Was this in the same section of time? Yes, we're in the end of day. So we've got those sections. Remember, we'll reference back to our sessions per day. This one right here. Okay, we know we've got that big end of day session where the pivots are related because they're inside of that session. Let's look over here to the right. Do I have an opportunity? Yes. Doesn't look like much, but remember what I said on this chart, it is. That 70 tick drop right there off of touching the top of that hill. Once again, boom, and we get the drop. Also correlated with a triangle. This is what I really like. This was something we added later for those ultimate obos divergences. Sorry, I'm trying to, I think I just copied the triangle instead of the square. Control C, Control V. Messing with me. There we go. Okay, 70 tick drop right there. 
Um, now it can play the other side of the two. I know I'm showing you the short side, but we can also do the long side. So pick an area where we went, uh, we had a big move to the upside. Okay, we had this one right here, so let's press F7 first. So down here, we have this one, F6. So this one, let's carry over here to the right. Here's our touch. Did we get an up move afterwards? Yes, we did. Can you see it? Of course you can. You guys are smart. Control C, Control V. Move that over. Of course, of course you can see it. Press F7. Boom, we had one right there. Now again, we start to draw a whole bunch of lines here. You don't have to draw a whole bunch of lines. I'm just showing you example after example here. I like to clear these after I've taken plays, but if I need to visually represent it for you, I'm showing you how many times this works out on your charts, even on just some random day like today. Here we go. So again, there's our touch. There's the pivot. Did we move up? And remember, this came from information just from prior. Now, a normal levels player, right? A levels player is stuck over here doing this. He's like, uh, let's see, uh, guys. Uh, see, I got an F6 right here. Huh. Well, there's my support right here. It's ICT land. Uh, I'm an ICT student, and uh, we got a double touch right here. So, uh, you know, oh, we're coming down here. Oh, ICT's like, okay, we're going short, guys. There's a target. <laughs> Muppet. Muppet. You wonder why all of his students work at Burger Marts. I'm just saying, listen, support and resistance, it's cute, but it's stupid. Um, stop, just stop it. Okay, so we're looking at the internals. Do you see how we can determine that that pivot point now correlates with this pivot point? But do you see how we can use what you would think of as support and resistance kind of thing? Because you're like, oh, where's the support? I hate to use that term down here because it's not really, but we're looking at another level on a histogram um, with, again, I'm not gonna talk about what this specifically is internals. You can go check out histogram stuff on our MACV entry system. But now we can figure out that this pivot Correlated with the up move from this was this morning, yeah, nine ten it was ten forty five. Um, at the end of this turning point was the same one that picked this move to the upside. Which and let's do the measurement on this. I don't think we've done a measurement to that direction. So let's see what that move is. That one is 178 ticks. Are you starting to feel it? Are you starting to catch on how cool the master strategy is? Very cool, very cool. So how do we play that in? You get it. Okay, I don't think I need to draw another example of one of these. That's what this one here. So now let's take that down to the higher, to the lower time frame for, okay, so now we get this set up. I see it, I wanna take this play, but I don't want the risk of this. Can I get a lower time frame play? Well, let's find out. So let's go to that time of day on the lower time frame. This is going to be, that one's 250. Uh, the one we took earlier right today, about this one right here at one, right around 130. So let's go back in the chart for that one. Okay, so let's look at this in both directions. We obviously had longs favorable on the day. Now it doesn't show right now because we're after hours, but during the daytime today, we had longs favorable. And of course we have our MACV filters that are showing up over here. And at some point in the day, at that point, we would have had green here telling us to the long side and we would have had longs favorable. So you got two things telling you that. So we're looking for the play, but which one do we want to take? Well, we also had our cadence going on. We were waiting, we had our multiple um, cadence scenarios. This is, you know, I'm not gonna go into that strategy here today, but you guys know it. If you guys have been following my live streams, you should know what this is. So can I take this with confidence? Can I take this to the long side with confidence? Yeah. Now, how is this, how does this correlate with the master strategy? Well, remember this right here? There it is. That was the box that we had picked out from before. You see? I come over here, what's my entry? Right here. What's my risk? Bottom of the enigma. Did it go all the way there? No, right here. So we enter in right here. Our heat, the heat that we took, was from there to right there. Not enough to stop us out. And now we get our run. Did we get our 20 ticks? Yes, remember, I'm gonna take, with, right, with an Enigma entry strategy, I'm gonna take 20 tick target, one, and then runner. 
and I'm gonna hold it until what? Until I see an opposing signal. So this play right here, off of initiating going, yeah, I've got a bigger play. I can take that with confidence, more confidence. Um, Cause again, not every Enigma is going to is going to succeed. So you need to try to filter for that, right? So now we have this beautiful opportunity coming from this plus our cadence. We like to add things together in our video game. I've told you guys, we add things together, real simple. But if I'm starting from this, I get my pivot point from here. I get my risk level off of here, but my reward from here. Do you see how we reduce the risk by increasing the reward opportunity? So here we go. I enter in right here, let's get our measurement. So I enter in on the green, I'm exiting when the red signal shows up. That is 58 ticks. Not too shabby. Multiply times contracts, etc. You know the drill. Again, multi multi hundred dollar trade could be thousand dollar trade if you got four contracts. Yeah, it's it's a it's pretty darn good play right there. All right, um, let's move to the next one. So now that was to the upside. What about the downside? Remember we said, hey, we had these both of these pivot back to back. We had this one, then we also had this one, right? Okay, so how? How do we play this one with less risk? Because remember, otherwise I've got to deal with a 33 some odd tick risk if I'm trying to play this off of purely a triangle um, divergence, right? Okay, so entry came and what did we see? This right here. We got a moonshot. Now, this one would have failed, but we weren't ready for that yet. Did we see some big delta there? No, did we see one right there though? Yes, we did. Did that correlate with something that we can play off of? Yes, it did. Where, what's our stop? So our risk on an entry like this is how many ticks? We enter in on the cross, stop is at the top of the cross. What did we risk? We risked 10 ticks. See that Y value? Okay, that's our 10 ticks. 10, tis, 10 tick risk, and now we take our drop. We're looking for our 20. Now off of a cross, I'm looking for usually 15. Okay, usually I get a 10 and a 15 in a runner. So we're getting a 10, a 15 off of one of these. Again, I do not just play these for some gigantic, you know, I'm not getting a 20 tick trade off of this. This is not an Enigma. Now off of an Enigma, yes, I would. I would play that, um, I would play that heavier on an Enigma for 20 and then runner, but off of a single, even though here, this is a power, this is a 19.2, and you're gonna start to recognize like how these numbers adjust. Remember over 18, I changed the color. Right, so this is a level 19. Those of you guys who have been around Alpha Omegas, we'll do a whole series around Alpha Omegas, but I take the Alpha Omega entry and I get my 1015 and I'm holding the runner. What do I exit on? I'm exiting on the opposing color. What's the opposing color? A green or a blue, which shows up right here. Let's get the measurement on what that is. So if I enter in on the pink cross to go short, plus on the high time frame, and now I'm holding out that position, what do we get on the drop? That is a 61 ticks. Now, that's just, you know, that isn't catching every tick in it, because remember we saw it was a 72 tick drop, and that's, that was measuring, you know, highest pivot to, you know, lowest point there. You're like, well, how did that correlate? Vinny, I thought you said that it was a 70, uh, I thought we measured that one 70. I might've been, I might've gotten that mixed up with that one, so. <clears throat> um, oh, that was this one. That was, this one over here was 70, so wrong one. Uh, scratch what I just said there. Okay, so the drop on that, we exit on that one right there. And look, do you see how our system tells us when to exit perfectly? Do you see why I love our system? Do you see why we game the system like this? We know what they're doing. We can see their action on the charts. We are detecting the algorithmic systems that actually move the markets. We are not the algorithmic system that moves the markets. We are the algorithmic system that fights the algorithms that move the markets. And by fight, I mean giving us the opportunities to ride with them when they are trying to shake us. That, my friends, is the master strategy. That's how I use it. If you guys have any questions, pop them down in the comments. Hang out in our Discord chat room. Don't forget, you can add the Enigma pack to your helping hands right now until June. If you do not get it before June, you will not have the uh, full auto entry options that you will have if you have entered in before June, you will have little buttons over here on the right. Everybody who gets in before June, you'll have buttons right underneath here that will arm and disarm for you to take the next Enigma. Only those who are in before June are gonna get that. So just food for thought, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.